why Channel 14 presents live coverage of the University of New Mexico Lobos against the Texas Tech University Red Raiders from Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. Last year, the Wolfpack lost a tough contest to the Red Raiders, a one-point nail-biter that the Lobos remember well. Lobo football on Channel 14 is brought to you in part by Ajax Mobile Homes. We trade for anything of value, no mother-in-laws, please. By Coors Premium Beer, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. And by Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. There's no slowing down with the Silver Bullet. Lubbock, Texas. You're looking at a building that was caught in a tornado about 15 years ago on a wild and woolly night in Lubbock and was literally warped and twisted by that tornado. Tonight in Lubbock, we're expecting another wild and woolly night. Hi, everybody. This is Connie Alexander along with Gary Ness. The Texas Tech Red Raiders return home tonight in their first two games. They have averaged 54 passes a game, so they should be exciting to watch. The Lobos with their famous run-and-shoot attack and their wishbone and their great uh, one-two hitter, uh, Billy Rucker, with the running and the passing are always exciting. So we think it's going to be a particularly exciting game to watch tonight. The Texas Tech team is returning from its worst defeat in history at the hands of the Miami Hurricane, which is ranked number two. Tech lost by 50 points, and I can assure you that they're going to be coming home tonight to try to regain some pride. I think they're going to really be hitting, and, and Gary, I think there's going to be a lot of kamikaze runs by those Tech players tonight. Well, yes, I agree. They sure want to erase an embarrassment, but University of New Mexico is in a tough position psychologically, too. They've had two valiant losses, but you don't want to become conditioned to losing in the last minutes so they're going to try to hang on and pull this one out something that hasn't been mentioned much about texas tech and they have a new coach david mcwilliams but it really hasn't been mentioned much that they inherited some pretty good material from last year yes especially defensively they had one of the top defenses in the country one of the top pass defenses in the country and they have their defensive coordinator still remaining with the staff that spike dykes who used to had performed the same duties at unm so they have some continuity in their defense and david mcwilliams our coach who used to be defensive coordinator at university of texas it's interesting that he's gone to the pass. Yes, it is. Perhaps because maybe it was the pass offense which caused him the most problems when he was a defensive coordinator. It's respect for such things that, that help coaches make decisions. So it's going to be a great game. And we'll be back in a minute with the shootout at the TT Corral. Hello, everybody. The Texas flag waving in a very strong breeze here at Jones Stadium. Sun has not yet set here as we're in the far western side of the Central Standard Time Zone. The Lobos will be kicking off. They won the toss, and they decided to defer and take their choice in the second half. So Texas Tech gets the first half choice, and they want the ball. And the Lobos will be kicking off, but the Lobos have the advantage of a wind, a very strong wind, which should help Bill Bell, number two, the place kicker. Well, Bill has a strong leg, and with this wind, I wouldn't be surprised if he can get this through the back of the end zone. In fact, if the wind will just allow the ball to lay on the tee long enough for him to kick it. Deep backs for Texas Tech are Walker and Henderson. Walker has 4.28 speed in the 40-yard dash. That is the fastest I have ever heard of in a 40-yard dash. 4.28 seconds, number 80, Walker. And Henderson, number 34, is a relative of... Hollywood Henderson, formerly of the D uh, Dallas Cowboys. Here is the boot by Bell. To Walker, touchback. So the Texas Tech Red Raiders will come out to their own 20-yard line. In their first two games, they have passed seven times out of the first eight plays and seven times out of the first nine plays. Now let's take a look at the defensive right cornerback for New Mexico. Here is a major change. See number seven moving out to the right of your screen. That is Kenneth Whitehead, who has been a receiver for the Lobos. He has been transferred from offense to defense, playing right cornerback number seven, Kenneth Whitehead. Starting on defense for New Mexico, he has caught 60 passes in the last two years. Here's a bomb from Tolliver, who gets behind Crum, and it's incomplete as he intends it for Walker. 
Well, if you're going to start open the game up, that's the way they want to do it. You know, if they don't complete that pass, what it does is tells the defense, we're going to throw the ball deep on you, so get back. And that's just what the defense will do. Whitehead at right cornerback starts in place of Anthony Stevenson. And you ask, has Whitehead had any experience as a defender? Yes, he has. He was an all-state defensive back in Michigan high school action. Second and ten. Raiders at their 20-yard line. You see they have two slot backs. Swings it out to Thurman. Thurman to the 28, to the 29 for a gain of nine. And look at that little guy as he gets up. He weighs 130 pounds, number 81. He is the smallest player in major college football. Five feet, three inches. Tyrone Thurman, a sophomore from Midland. And nicknamed appropriately Smurf. He caught a pass to That's win him. to win a game against Tulsa last year in their second game of the season in the last few seconds of play. So he is a he's a clutch performer for them. Third and one. And the Raiders have thrown on the first two downs. Power eye set this time. Two tight ends. And the first down to the 35. Irvin Ferris, their eye back or tailback. Leading ground gainer has averaged five yards a carry. And he tacks on six more yards. And Bob Umdenstock, number 51, makes the tackle. Irvin Ferris has that good compact build. He's 5'11", 220 pounds, and if he gets a lead back in front of him and line pushing out, he's hard to stop. Texas Tech first and 10 at its own 35. They have passed 60% of their plays in the first two games. Coming to Anderson at the 39. Push back to the 37 of Texas Tech for a gain of two. Nice recovery by guess who? Kim, Mr. Kenneth Whitehead. He played off with a cushion, but then came up immediately when the ball was thrown. Didn't get there before the ball arrived, but he held it to a two-yard game. The Lobo defensive front four. Edwards, Mady, Douglas, or rather Level, and uh, Vaughn. Level weighs 260, the defensive right tackle. Now it's at the 37. Second down at eight. Tech territory. In motion is Price, number 10. He's uh, one of their wide receivers. This is Tolliver. Oh, Price is overthrown on the Lobo 42. Price has caught six passes this year. And it's going to be third and eight. Tech at its 37-yard line. He got outside. Tolliver rushed outside of Torrey Edwards. Torrey Edwards got his feet cut out from under him, and that allowed all that time. And so on the corner, Don Kirkendall had to choose between coming up to support on the run or staying with his receiver. Tolliver read it right. When Kirkendall broke to come up, he threw it, but a little bit over the head of the receiver. Third down. Eight to go. Tolliver. Great hit defensively by Lara, number 28, to break up the play as Walker had it in the bank, and Lara broke it loose. Now, Tolliver will show us the strength of his arm here. Now, watch him plant that hind foot and step into the throw. There's a lot of zip on the ball. Danny got there right about the same time as the ball, though. Nice play defensively. And it's fourth and eight for Texas Tech. Simmons back to punt. No, it's Burns averaging 41.5. Into the wind, does a good job keeping it low. And a good Texas Tech bounce. This is going to be good net yardage into the wind. The line of scrimmage was the 37, 13 plus 35, a 48-yard kick into the wind. Nice Got an AstroTurf you. bounce. It sure did. And that, that low kick really uh, stayed close to the round, got the good bounce. The Lobo offensive line averaging 246. Maney, the anchor man at center. And here come the Lobos offensively for the first time tonight with Billy Rucker in the cockpit. shoot alignment fake to the fullback and Rucker is going to keep it for good yardage Monty Melcher on the tackle Billy Rucker gosh what's Billy wearing there well those are some rib pads I believe that show underneath his jersey 
He's not old enough to wear a corset. <laughs> it's on the 24, second down and about three. Mathis in motion. And Burgess has the first down. And Michael Johnson makes the tackle. Burgess, the Lobos' leading rusher. Had a sprained ankle. Big number 33. Not so big. 187, 59. But boy, he is really put together. He is uh, built like a rock at Gibraltar. Really has a lot of strength in those legs. First and 10. Lobos at the their 30-yard line in the wishbone configuration. Uh, Billy Rucker. Burgess. Little struggle inside there. Not much profit on that deal. Yeah, Danny Riggs, number 35, coming in a stunt, and he was he was going to try to reach Billy Rucker, the quarterback, as quickly as he could, no matter what Billy does. Did. Lobos have only passed 32 percent of the time. No score here in the opening minutes of the first quarter. Two and a half minutes gone. That Tech defense toughens up, and then Brad Hastings. The greatest tackler in tech history, number 44, made that tackle. He had 312 tackles the last two years. He had 29 tackles against Texas A&M, the Southwest Conference champions, and he had 25 against SMU. We're talking about number 44, Brad Hastings for Tech, their middle linebacker. You'll be seeing a lot of him defensively. Third and about eight. horse collar to the deck by Hastings. There's Hastings again. So we've seen Hastings make two tackles now. In high school, he made 266 tackles, and he had 312 college tackles. He's close to 600 in his career. That's a lot of hits. Well, you consider he has more, more tackles than anyone in Texas Tech history, and when you consider E.J. Holub played here, that means that's saying something right there. Tyrone Thurman is a deep back, and he is standing some 65 yards downfield from Keller, who is now putting for the Lobos. Oh, a gorgeous thing. Oh, it drives Thurman back and off his fingertips and out of bounds inside the 15 at the 12-yard line where Tech will take over. There is no score. Four minutes gone. First down 10 for the Texas Tech Red Raiders at their own 12-yard line. They have passed on first down 75% of the time this year. They have passed on first down like uh, 58 out of 76 times. Let's see what they do here. Draw play. Pull back. Ferris, 17. 220-pound sophomore. Bob Umminstock started to retreat into his pass coverage on that play, but saw the handoff and came up to stop it for uh, about a four or five yard gain. It's on the 17. Call it uh, a little closer to five yards than four. It'll be second and a long five. No score. Four and a half minutes gone in the first quarter. And Texas Tech got to the 20-yard line. It's Isaac Garnett, 225, a sophomore. Kind of interesting. Garnett, number 43, and Ferris, number 46, the two guys who carried the balls in the last two plays, they were born on the same day. One's from Midland, one's from Fort Worth. It appears at this point like they're going to try to use some size and strength and try to attack the middle of the Lobo defense. Third down, two to go from the Tech 20. Ferris, the fullback in motion. Activity before the snap, flags. And number 45 is Philip Vaughn, the Lobo defender who grabbed the quarterback, Tolliver. And a referee, Doyle Jackson. The illegal procedure against Texas Tech. And the officials, some of them from the Southwest Conference and some from the Western Athletic Conference. Dead ball, encroachment, offense. So the five-yard penalty will bring up third and seven for Texas Tech from the Tech Red Raider 15-yard line. Still bright sunshine. 
covering Lubbock here in this scoreless first quarter. And bursting for the first down is Garnett. Garnett found a trap door and slashes through for Tex first down and Mike Kirkendall 23 comes up to make the hit. There was a trap on the line of scrimmage and the Lobos had stemmed to a different front when they saw the motion man and it took them right out of the play. So a big third down conversion for the Red Raiders to their 25 yard line. And the quick out and a good catch by Anderson by Walker, Wayne Walker. That's Walker's fourth catch of the year. He's a 160-pounder, not very big, 5'9", sophomore out of Waco, and he's the kid with the great speed. And by the way, last year, he took the ball on six reverses from that split-in position and ran for 208 yards. So be alert for him on a long gainer if he takes it on a reverse. Second and three. Tech 32. First down, Garnett to the 41. The big train from Midland ran 2,000 yards as a senior over in Midland, Garnett. Actually, Texas Tech says, let's not get fancy. We'll throw the quick out pattern, but basically let's attack the middle. And they've been trapping on that front, giving them on draws. The left guard pull in front of this play. Torrey Edwards a little bit too wide to make the plays to Bob Umdenstock, the linebacker, makes a stop. Umdenstock 51, Torrey Edwards 47. First down, Tech 41. Whitehead up in there. Whitehead almost made an interception. The incomplete. Eddie Anderson, the intended receiver. Number seven, Kenneth Whitehead, former receiver for the Lobos. In case you just tuned in, we mentioned on the very first defensive play that Kenneth Whitehead, 6'3", 200 pounder out of Detroit have been shifted from offense to defense it's playing in place of Anthony Stevenson and it'll be interesting to see how he performs at quarterback but he is uh, an experienced defensive player from high school and you know he has a height advantage against these Texas Tech receivers they're very Tech receivers are very fast but they're short Tolliver is connected on three out of seven for 18 yards back spaces Trio of Lobos have him, 68 is level, 28 Lara, level is 260, junior from New Orleans, out to the 49 and it's going to be only a yard needed. Let's see, was this a, no I don't believe it was a quarterback draw, I believe he was trying to release a quick pass, but he saw the middle open up and like a good quarterback took advantage of it. And Danny Lara is a good defensive player. The Lobo's number one tackler really is Danny. 21 tackles before today's game. Uh, 13 of those unassisted. He's a transfer out of Tyler, Texas Junior College. Third and a beefy yard to go from the Tech 49. Umdenstock coming in from behind. Complete to Anderson and drilled at the near sideline by Crum. But it's the first down. And for the first time Tech penetrates New Mexico property. Well, he had to get, he didn't know it that um, Umdenstock was coming from his blind side, so Tolliver paid the price, and he made a good shot out here to Anderson. Strong throw. Anderson had caught nine before today, pre-law major. 5'9", 160. Wide to the left goes Thurman. Walker wide to the right. They are a couple of speedsters. And up the middle, Garnett. Slashes and crashes to the Lobo 30 for another first down. And Crum makes the saving tackle. Action-packed Lobo football on Channel 14 is brought to you in part by Coors Premium Beer. The beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. First down, 30-yard line. And a sprint draw to Ferris. Ferris unravels about three. Number 56 is Tom Cole, 77, Fred Beatty. 
Well, the concern here for the Lobo defense is are we missing tackles or are we in the wrong defense for this type of an offense? And I think right now they're, they're, they're going to stay with what they had planned and try to tackle better on the line of scrimmage. Second, about seven. A sideline route complete to Walker. Should be a first down. Wayne Walker, the sophomore out of Waco. And Crumb made the tackle. Here's that strong arm now. Walker shows some good precision in his patterns here. He's standing right inside the line. Now, even though he will come down out of bounds, the referee in position sees that he caught it in, and the defender pushed him out, so they give him credit for the catch. The Tech offense is working. You see the aerial game is working, and Garnett has rushed for 34 yards and Ferris for 14. Fumble, and the Lobos get the ball at the 18-yard line as there was a malfunction at the junction. Looks like Mady is the guy who recovered it. In fact, if we see a replay, we might see Mady take the handoff. Now watch for 77, slicing through. See him? See him? He's going to take the handoff. He does. How Look about at that. that? Fred Mady. Great play by Mady. No score. Nine minutes gone in the first quarter. This is Connie Alexander with Gary Ness back at Jones Stadium in Lubbock and the Lobos have the ball now on their own 18 first and 10 as Fred Mady stole the handoff and Burgess digs into the Texas Tech defense and Danny Schwartner at 250 meets him. Boy, Gary, doesn't look like uh, the Lobos are going to get much going upstream there. No, it doesn't. For some reason, actually, Tech's forward front on defense has played the New Mexico forward wall better than the first two opponents thus far. And uh, Tank Jackson, number 69, weighs 290 at left tackle defensively for the Red Raiders. Good move by Rucker. Great tackle by Michael Johnson, the Red Raiders' leading tackler. Came into the game with 14 unassisted tackles, and the one you just saw is his sixth one for a loss this year. Now watch Kevin Burgess, the fullback, cut down there. See number 33? He cuts down the end. That should give Billy some time, but that great pursuit by Johnson gets him. Johnson, 215, 6'2", junior out of Midland. So it's third and 11 for the Lobos from their 17. Rodgers in motion. Kelly had it, and then it was jarred loose. It is incomplete. Knocked loose by Roland Mitchell, the cornerback. Good hit by Mitchell on Kelly. Kelly is an Odessa Permian product from just down the road, about 100 miles, and we're going to take another look. This Roland Mitchell is an all-Southwest Conference candidate who makes the hit here. And by the way, one of the Southwest Conference's top high jumpers, he's high jumped seven feet three inches. Fourth and 11, Lobos from their 17. Keller will have the help of a wind here. Thurman stands deep at his own 20. Thurman on the 32. So the Raiders will go from their 34 with 404 left. No score first quarter. Saturday, September 27th at 10 o'clock. Only on KGSW TV, channel 14. First and 10 for the Raiders from their 35. Tolliver gives it to the big guy Garnett. Slashing off tackle. 51 on Ben Stock. 46 is Gassaway. 47 Tory Edwards. Oh, that Garnett is a chunk. Both of their running backs are in the neighborhood of 220, 225 pounds, and when they come at you, uh, it's difficult. Garnett, five carries, 34 yards. Tolliver, the quarterback, he is hit 44% coming into tonight's game. 
Here comes the blitz. That's Tori Edwards. Tolliver eludes him. The bomb. He's behind everybody. And Whitehead managed to get back over in front of Thurman, the intended receiver. Whitehead recovered well. Oh, a lot of ifs on this play. If Tory Edwards had been able to keep his feet, he could have had Tolliver for a 10-yard loss. If Whitehead hadn't jumped too soon, he might have ended up with an interception. There's Kenneth Whitehead playing at right corner back. He came all the way from right corner. Really, I don't think that was his man. And he, Well, he had, uh, that was a long, long throw by Tolliver, and he had a chance to gain some ground, which he did. Third and about nine. And the draw play, and Garnett's got a first down again. Oh, my, is he making the yardage up the middle? Torrey Edwards on the stop. Keller has punted twice with the win for 62 and 56 yards, and it is a strong southerly breeze. One of those West Texas winds. It's got to be good 20 miles an hour. And right now, Texas Tech is doing the best with the win. They're running into it and making good games, especially on the draws. First down from their 47. Tolliver throws it away. Tyrone Thurman, number 81 at the bottom of your screen, was double covered. By that I mean uh, Bob Umdenstock, the linebacker, had stepped up and he was right in line. And so Tolliver had no, no choice except either eat the ball, take the loss, or throw it out of bounds, which he did the latter. Going to be second down and 10. Tolliver is hit 5 out of 11 for 31 yards. Give me the truck. Overthrows Price. Texas Tech did a cute thing there. They lined up two wingbacks to the top of the screen, sent one of them back in motion to the bottom, and then hoped that Kirkendall, their strong safety, would forget about the run remaining and streaked him up the top, but Tolliver let loose of the ball a little early, and the receiver was not able to run under it. Third and ten, the famous masked rider on Happy Five. play but he didn't get to the line to gain so it's going to be fourth and about a yard or so as Kenneth Whitehead made the tackle on James Gray a 200 pound freshman it's on the 44 the line to gain the 43 there goes the punt team <laughs> the home crowd thought this would be a good position to uh, try to go for it on fourth and one Burns will punt did a good job on the first one, sophomore out of Vernon, Texas. And the Lobos are calling a timeout. The Lobos calling a timeout. Terrence Mathis. 2.13 to go in the first period. There's no score. Don't miss exciting Lobo football action in October with two great matchups. On October 11th, the Lobos host the UTEP Miners, and on October 25th, the Lobos face state rival New Mexico State. Both games at 10 p.m. from University Stadium on KGSW-TV Channel 14. This Lobo football excitement on Channel 14 brought to you in part by Ajax Mobile Homes where they say we trade for anything of value and no mother-in-laws, please. <laughs> I really don't believe the Lobos were expecting uh, them to punt either, and the Lobos had their fourth yard or short yardage defense on the field. I think that's why they called the timeout. Mathis, the safety man at the 10. rush by Danny Douglas out of bounds in good shape for Tech at the Lobo 13 yard line An excellent kick out of bounds it wasn't very far or wasn't very pretty but it got in anytime you can put it out of bounds inside the 20 you've gained 
because the ball inside in the end zone is brought out to the 20 anyway, so he's very satisfied with that kick. Maney, 236, over the ball at center for the Lobos. Drop play to Burgess. Tackle by Hastings and by Michael Johnson. Hastings, an All-America candidate, made honorable mention All-America last year. All right, there, the, Lobo, the Lobo line is taking advantage now of the same type of rush that that uh, the Tech were team was doing. Force the pass, but overrun the draw play. This is an interesting statistic on uh, possession. Tech has had it 23 plays, the Lobos nine. Late in the first quarter. Well, Burgess loses it, but recovers it. That'll bring up third and long with 120 left in the first period. There's Ned James, number 17, into the game. Ned James is expected to see a lot more action now that Kenneth Whitehead is, is playing defense. And Ned's a good athlete. They'd like to get the ball to him out in some open space, see what he does. He's coming over to wide receiver left. On third and about nine. Triple receivers right for the Lobos. And Rucker shirt tail out of bounds, and it's going to be fourth and a bunch. Hastings puts another tackle into his deposit. Count. On the negative side for Lobo fans is that the Lobos just haven't done much offensively with the wind at their backs. And just a, in just a little, well, 49 seconds on the clock, they'll be have to go into the wind, and it's going to be a little tougher. No score here at Jones Stadium in Lubbock. Ron Keller, his average 43.7, came into the game ranked 15th nationally. 130-pound Tyrone Thurman. Steve Holmes for the Lobos. We ought to give some credit here to the Lobo kick coverage, punt coverage, excuse me. It has been outstanding. Kicking with the wind, you get the ball up high and you get the ball downfield, but uh, no, no opportunity to, for returns because of the coverage. First and 10, Tech at its 45 in good field position. 38 seconds left in the first quarter. It's Oliver and it's knocked down by Gassaway who almost picked off the missile intended for Tim Tannehill, who is the leading receiver with 11 grabs coming into this game. Total yards, Tech, 100. New Mexico, if you're a Lobo fan, you ain't going to like this number. Five yards offense for the Lobos so far. Look at the defense is playing well at this point. Uh, they've kept the Lobos in this game. Second and 10. Lobo defense has held Tolliver to under 50% completions. They've allowed 65% completions in the first two games. Four-yard pickup by Gray. 25 seconds left in the first period. No score. Donnie Gassaway, the number one tackler last year, makes the stop on this play. There's the big uh, interior line for Tech, which averages 256. From tackle to tackle, they weigh 250, 260, 255, 265, and 250 but not real big in today's football. Smaller than the last two opponents in the Lobos have faced. It's gray in motion and the quarter expires. So after one period, it's a dead heat. 4-1-6-5-3. So we're about ready to start the second quarter here in this city of 187,000 Lubbock on the beautiful campus of Texas Tech University and Tech facing third and about six. Almost seven. And they're gonna face a fourth down situation as Garnett could not make the first down. Tom Cole, number 56, defensively for the Lobos. So now Burns will get to punt with the win. 
And Terrence Mathis, a fine kick returner. Stands at his own 10. And a touchback to the Lobos will own it at the Lobo 20-yard line. We're going to take a quick break here. No score. Out of the wishbone alignment. Rodgers. And Rodgers gets about a dozen yards before Roland Mitchell comes in from cornerback to make the stop. Texas Tech starting eight seniors tonight out of its top 22. The Lobos starting something like nine. And the Texas Tech team last year lost only four Southwest Conference games by a total of six points. So they have some good material back. Vaughn Simmons, number 30, now at fullback for the Lobos. Here's a pitch to Rodgers. And Rodgers is dumped for virtually nothing by Ricky Boysaw, the defensive left in 225. He was an offensive back in high school at Monahans, Texas. Ran 200 or 2,800 yards in two years. I think we're seeing a change in strategy. Strategy now. The Lobos are lining up in a full wishbone backfield, and Jarvis McCire is in there now. Well, just as soon as we say that, they come out with their wishbone. So here they are back in the wish in the uh, run, run and shoot. shoot. McCire, number 34, in the quarterback draw, and Billy goes. To the 42 of Tech, and Hastings made the saving tackle. 235-pound Brad Hastings, and Billy Rucker did it from his 32 down to the Tech 42, about 26 yards. And that is the quarterback draw with the right guard pulling, and that is, there's, that is not designed for a pass play at all. That's not a scramble. That is a quarterback draw by design. Billy Rucker, the senior from Gallup. McKire in motion. So the Lobos have triple receivers to the right after the motion. Rucker keeps for a yard or two. Artis Jackson and Eddie Kittle bring him down. Jackson is that 290-pound, 6'5 defensive left tackle out of Dallas, where he was an All-America high school wrestler. He has weighed as much as 350 pounds in his lifetime. And notice how Jackson and the others, after those two plays there, have slowed the rush. They're not as quick to come, come across the line of scrimmage after that draw. Jackson is number 69 for Texas Tech at left tackle. going to be intentional grounding. It'll be five yards from where the flag is and loss of down as Terrence Mathis hit the panic button. You know, it's too bad. I think the pitch was out there in time, but he couldn't get a handle on the ball because he wanted to throw to Brent Kelly down the sideline. Terrence Mathis, of course, was a high school quarterback and can throw, but he couldn't quite get the handle and so until the rush got to him. And then, of course, when you release it after when you're being hit, let's see what he calls it here. Illegal pass, loss of down, third down. Third and a bunch from the Lobo 49. They have to go all the way down to the Texas Tech 32. So it's third and 19. No score. Two and a half minutes gone in the second period. being rushed by Johnson. Gets it away to Mathis. Mathis shy of the line to gain. Skirlark made the tackle. That was the third down pass, and they're about three yards away from a first down. I think we'll see the reason for the flag here. If we see Billy after the ball, he took a shot and ripped his helmet that ripped his helmet off. Let's see what the call is here. Referee Doyle Jackson talking with Billy Rucker. Explaining the options.
defense roughing the passer. Automatic first down. So he puts the ball on the Texas Tech 36 yard line. The Texas Tech faithful, they're expecting about 35,000 here tonight. Averaged about 36,000 last year. First down Lobos on the Tech 36. Once again, the heart of that Texas Tech defense. Hastings and Michael Johnson. And the Lobos are having trouble operating through the middle. In fact, uh, Lobo offense may need a jumper cable along about here. Michael Johnson was who the, the flag was thrown against on the previous play, and he's all riled up. Managed to sneak through there, but I think in coming with a wishbone, a team that's angry, that's, that's the offense to come at them with. Second down, 10. That's Mathis. Mathis loses it and is picked up by Skirlark. Up the near sideline to midfield. McCabe hits him and drops him on the Lobo 44. It's Cowan who picked it off. Boyd Cowan who picked off the mid-air fumble. He returned an interception 83 yards for a touchdown against Kansas State. And the tide has suddenly turned as the Lobos were starting to percolate deep into Tech property. Let's take another look as Mathis had the ball jarred loose into the arms of Cowan. All right, this is the veer pass off of that run and shoot. And as you see, a 15, Terrence Mathis wide open. Now he tries to get out on the outside, loses possession of the ball, and ill fate still haunts New Mexico. Everett was the man who caused the fumble. And for the Lobos, number 52, the right guard, Brian McCabe, made the tackle. Tyrone Thurman, number 81, with the ball for the Red Raiders in Lobo territory. And Tom Cole, number 56, gets the stop. Number 96 for the Lobos is Bobby Edwards, a 250-pound defensive tackle, who is the backup for Fred Mady. Second down, 10 to go. Lobo 44. Looking for Anderson. Coverage by Lara. Two really good things happen on that play for the Lobos. Torrey Edwards, the uh, defensive end to the top of the screen, kept his feet and forced Tolliver to throw it from behind his own line, from behind his own tackle. And the other thing was Danny Lara had perfect coverage. There was no, work, no place, nothing to do but to throw it away. For the first time in a long time, there are no players from the state of New Mexico performing for Texas Tech. The one player from New Mexico, Timmy Smith from Hobbs, is out for the season with a broken ankle. Tolliver on a sideline comeback for Tannehill. Complete at the 40, but it's going to be fourth and six from there as Kirkendall corralled him. Timmy Smith out for the year with the broken ankle. He's rushed for 1,300 yards in his Texas Tech career. Now, Umden Stock 51, you saw him keep his outside position so that Tolliver could not get flushed out, had to release the ball. Good coverage by Kirkendall. Price number 10 going on with the message here on the fourth and six at the Lobo 40-yard line. And a timeout being called by Texas Tech as Tolliver's going to come talk to us and number one contender Jean-Marie maybe for the title. That's tonight on Channel 14, KGSW-TV, right after the football game. Are you a boxing fan? Sort of. Yeah. I like to watch those lower weights fight because I think they uh, have a lot more action than the heavier weights. 36,520 paid here tonight. Fourth and six, and Tech's going for it. After a timeout. Trying to draw the offside. May get delay of game. They were trying to draw the Lobos offside. You're exactly now they send right. the punt team on. You're exactly right. They, against an undisciplined team, that might have worked. But the Lobos showed some poise. So the punter comes on stage. Penalties tonight. Tech 2 for 20. Lobos 1 for 10. Tolliver has hit 6 out of 15 for 34 yards. Garnett's the leading ball carrier, 7 for 49. Our statistician, Charlie Waite, is doing a good job. 
Mathis poised for the punt return. Good high kick. And the touchback. Take it out to the Lobo 20-yard line. We have an opportunity here to give you some scores of other games. Some good games today. Pitt beat Purdue 41-26. Check this one. Clemson beat Georgia 31-28. Michigan over Oregon State 31-12. Michigan State beat Notre Dame 20-15 as the Irish lose two close ones in a row. Alabama over Florida 21-7. Ohio State just squeaked by Colorado 13-10 on a last-minute field goal. Houston beat Oklahoma State. Mathis in motion. Clear out for Rodgers, out to his 33, a 13-yard gain as Rodgers makes his fourth reception of the year, and he's hit down by Michael Johnson. Some scores from other games, Auburn blanked East Carolina 45-0, Texas beat Missouri 27-25, Oklahoma slaughtered Minnesota 63-0, Arkansas whipped Tulsa 34-12. First and ten, Lobos from their 33. Looks like Mathis at the 42. No, it's Rogers. Washington clobbered BYU 52 to 21 this afternoon, and North Carolina and Florida State tied. And Baylor lost to Heartbreaker. You may have seen that one on TV. USC beat Baylor 17 to 14. Baylor will be here on this gridiron next week. That was a heartbreaker for the Baylor team. Baylor suffered something like the Lobos suffered just a little while ago, that fumble in the air. Second and one. And a great play by Calvin Riggs on Rucker. Now Riggs is noted for big plays. He's noted for pressuring the quarterback, and that was a patented Calvin Riggs play right there, number 35, a former high school All-American out of Midland. The Lobos on a waist down on a second and one tried to uh, uh, fake the run and pop the pass, but Riggs in the back chasing it from the blind side caught it. Third and five. Still no score. Middle of the second quarter. Great play to Simmons from Rucker for the first down as Rucker was under absolutely tremendous heat on the blitz. What's, what's the defender here? 28, that's Leonard Jones. The safety valve receiver in this play, it was the fullback. They also run this from a screen where the linemen get out in front of Vaughn and which uh, could be very effective. Was well, a good play by Billy Rucker for the first down, down to the Red Raider, 47 and a half. Rucker four for five aerially for 66 yards as the Lobo offense seems to be working now. As Simmons into the storm, 290-pound tank Jackson defensively on Simmons. Simmons, the 215-pound junior for the Lobos out of Altadena, California. You know, I believe that Tank Jackson and and Shortner and Riggs and Boykin, I think Boyson's, excuse me, Boy Saw, are as good a defensive front as the Lobos have faced. Second and eight. Rucker on the swing to Mathis. Mathis sidelined by Brian Rollins. Beautiful play by the Lobos, and that's the first time I've seen him pull that one. Well, now, Rucker, that's a choice. He has the choice of running to the wide receiver who's running down a streak pattern down the sideline, or he can flip it to the safety valve. It, it really stretches the defense, forces the defense to cover laterally as well as vertically. Actually, that's just a modified swing pass when you boil it all down. Yeah. First and 10, Lobos on the Tech 37-yard line. Burgess 
Good work. And the left side of the line, Parr and Donaldson at 261 and 258. Deserves some credit for that. Yes, and what they did was they set the wing back to the top in motion to the bottom. And the linebacker leaves with him. That leaves one less defender of that side of the line of scrimmage so Burgess can uh, penetrate further. On the 32, second and five. under throws Rogers third and five coming she there was some good coverage on that play I thought that play the fake into the line of scrimmage and then he evaded the, the contained man on defense I thought for sure by that time somebody would shake free but the coverage was excellent on Glenn Rogers number 24 Billy Rucker with 3,682 yards total offense in two years and he looks like a lock to break Rocky Long's three-year record total offense 44-61 are going to face fourth down going into the wind they try a field goal it's going to be 50 yards Calvin Riggs made the tackle and that was the first time in a game this year that they have showed the counter option out of the wishbone Billy actually turned completely reversed out from under the center but they had penetration across the line of scrimmage which you can't allow against the counter option looks like they're going for it on fourth down fourth and five Ned James wide receiver left Arbon wide to the right. Rogers and Mathis in the slots. Sims at fullback. Mathis in motion against the five front. And Rucker misses the target. Six minutes left in a scoreless first half. Lobos eight. The so Lobos have started to even it up statistically. Tolliver. Wide of his man, Walker. Miscommunication there. Walker ran a pattern that uh, Tolliver wasn't expecting. Walker ran the curl in, and and Tolliver threw the out. But what is what is helping the Lobos at this point, Connie, is that the containment on the rush is keeping Tolliver from scrambling out, allowing his receivers to gain more time. And that's why he's had to throw the ball early. And you got to be you got to make exactly the right decision when you throw early. That wind is still whipping the flags coming in from behind the Red Raiders from the south at about 20 miles per hour. It's a nice warm evening. Not too hot. Thurman bobbles it. It's going to be third and ten from Tex 31. Webster number 44 covering for the Lobos, a Chicago soft. <laughs> there were a, He threw into a crowd because there were two receivers which you don't ordinarily see or don't want to see two receivers running in the same area and the defenders they brought with them so uh, Tech is lucky to still retain the ball third and ten big play Tolliver has hit only six out of 17 for 34 yards he's going for all of it and let Anderson get behind him. Danny Laura on the coverage. That's one of those th balls that's thrown so long that the person, the outfielder who best judges the fly ball ends up with it. And right then, I think Danny misjudged a little bit. It carried a little further than he expected. Of course, number 17, Talbot, he's a 6'2", strong guy there. He's got that wind behind him, so that ball's going to float. Denny had actually pulled up and, and held up a little bit. That was about a 65-yard bomb with the win. Here's the punt to Mathis at his 26. Good counterpunch by Mathis to the Lobo 32. Yes, it was because the Lobos had the punt block on, which meant there was nobody to back there to set up a wall for Mathis. It's in, in essence, you're on your own, Terrence, and uh, he could have elected to free catch it on those situations, but he still made about a five or six yard gain. Tolliver now 41 completions out of 96 attempts for the season. So you see he's not much over 40%. And Tech is going to need a better passing statistic than that to be successful. Rucker to Rogers. Nice fielding by Rogers at his 38-yard line. 
Rodgers is only 5'7", 174. Leonard Jones made the tackle on him. They call him Wolf. He is high jump 6'6", in high school. So that Tech secondary is a very athletic and strong group. Mitchell has high jump 7'3". Jones is high jump 6'6". And Everett, the defensive halfback, has triple jumped 47 feet. KGSW-TV, channel 14 in Albuquerque, as Rogers is in motion. And Billy Rucker, looking for a first down, doesn't find it on that second down effort before Mosley makes the stop on him. Interesting about Mosley, he's a walk-on, he's a sophomore, but he's a three-year military veteran. And you know what his job was? It was arming and disarming nuclear bombs and rockets carried by bombers and fighter planes when he was in the Army. I hope he has good hands. <laughs> He's a defensive end. Mosley, number 82 for Tech. Wishbone to Mathis. And it's close to the first down. From here, it does not look like they made it. Roland Mitchell at quarterback made the hit on Mathis. Well, this is, they're going with the option op, option pitch off of the wishbone, which the cornerback from Texas Tech came up to meet him on the line of scrimmage and excellent run support on that play. They're going to measure. This is a major measurement before this crowd of 36,500. Short by a foot. Fourth and a foot for the Lobos. So they're going to have to punt as the ball is inside the Lobo 42 and the Keller will kick into the wind. Lobos in their first two games played before an average of 79,000 folks. New Mexico punts three for 51.7, Tech five for 43 yards on the averages. Keller, the Colorado senior. And Thurman is the deep back for Texas Tech. 5'3", 130. Smallest major college player in the USA. Three fifty-seven left in the first half. No score so far. Oh, a great punt into the win. Mike Keller to the 12. Thurman might go. Good play by Umdenstock, who made a good move to allow Kirkendall to come up. Isn't he amazing, that little guy? Gee, he reversed his field three times back there. Usually when a, when a receiver reverses his field like that, you almost inevitably see a flag for a clip. But now watch him change direction once. Twice. Spun out of that one. Look for okay. 51. Look for 51 in here and the move that Umrestock makes. I don't know whether you can see him. From behind. 87. 87 for the Lobos on the tackle. Is that Art Martinez? You're right. This is Walker. And Joe Sells, 32, drops him. That was a beautiful punt, and that, you know, those those punt returns like that, they tend to get your offense all excited. They get the crowd into the game, so Lobo defense is going to be tested right here because with three minutes left to go, three minutes and 13 and counting down, they've got time to get it in the end zone. It's second down on about three for the Raiders from their 41. There's Joe Sells, a senior from Phoenix. Tannehill in motion. Here's that reverse to Walker. But the Lobos were waiting for it. Kirkendall, number 23. And number 56, Cole. Yes, you, you, Kirkendall was the guy who waited. There was, Kirkendall was the only white shirt at the bottom of the screen. Walker averaged 37 yards on that play last year, six times. Now let's see from this angle where we can see. There's Kirkendall. You see he's the only man on the right. And by golly, gets inside the blocker. What a play by Don Kirkendall. He got the first down, though. At the Tech 48. Lobos with two down linemen. Good tackle by White. 
right hit on Ferris, but it's another Raider first down with 2.23 left. Clock stopped on the first down until they reset the chains. This is the play. The biggest play for Tech this evening has been the draw play. Take advantage of the hard rush. And once again, it works successfully. Tannehill in motion. Ferris. Number seven is Whitehead. 56 Cole. Boy, those tech backs are strong. One play to stop. The one play that has hurt New Mexico has been the sprint draw or the draw action play. And Gee, they even, you don't usually see true two draw plays in succession, and we saw them right there, both of them gaining first downs. We have some interesting halftime things for you. Interesting piece that Paul Provencher has on David Lolly, one of the Lobo linemen, the big, huge guy who is an outstanding artist. I think you'll like it. Garnett, first down inside the 10, with 134 left in the half. Danny Laura made the secondary tackle. Garnett finds the big hole. There you see the left guard pull. That's a, just a middle trap for the fullback. Loss of possession, but his knee was already down. Garnett, 225, 5'11", sophomore. They put it down just outside the 10. Garnett with 62 yards on eight journeys. Kirkendall, 23, coming in for the primary hit on Ferris. The clock is a major factor, 107. And a timeout called by the Raiders now to stop the clock with 105 to go. And the ball down on the eight-yard line of the Lobos, where it'll be second down. And about seven and a half yards to go to a first down, eight yards to go to a touchdown. Spend the night with one of America's funniest ladies. Watch The Late Show, starring Joan Rivers, premiering Thursday, October 9th at 10 p.m., 10.30 p.m., that is, on KGSW-TV, Channel 14. So Lubbock is settling in for the night here, a beautiful late summer night, almost uh, early autumn. Yeah, just a little humid. You got the breeze out of the south. Actually, it, I think you'd call it a wind. But uh, when it comes from the south, you've got Gulf Air. And as you and I know, both having lived in Texas before, it's, it, that means there's humidity. Lobos, in their first three games, have played before an average of 65,000. 94,000 at Knoxville, 64-plus at Provo, and 36-5 here tonight. Trying to see how many timeouts it's showing. What is it? Two timeout, one timeout left for Tech. Tech has one timeout left. Second down, 105 to go. First half, no score. Good rush by Kirkendall. Umden stock from behind. And it's unloaded by Tolliver. I think he intentionally overthrew Anderson. Yeah, it, the, the coverage was good out there by Crum. But the, the, the nice thing was that Philip Vaughn kept Tolliver from escaping to the sideline. Now let's watch this as he retreats. He would like to get outside, but it's Don Kirkendall there. Kirkendall. And there's Umden stock from behind. 51. 58 seconds left. Third down coming at the Lobo 8-yard line. 58 seconds left in the period. Garnett. A bunch of low defenders and a flag. They did not get it. Now there's an indication of, uh, let's see, is the ref indicating a penalty against Tech, or was there a fumble down there? I think he means that it was a foul. It's, no, face mask against the Lobos. Sells and Umdenstock made two of the main hits in there, and the penalty is going to be critical. All right, let's see if we can see it. Not much of a hole there. Matey has him from behind, and Tom Cole... Face mask, five yards, halfway to the distance of the goal. Right here. 
So they put it on the three. And the down indicator still showing third down, and the clock showing 53 seconds left in the half. The biggest advantage of that penalty uh, to Texas Tech was that it stopped the clock momentarily. Third down, goal, uh, well, actually two and a half yards to go for a first down and three to a touchdown. The power eye. And the touchdown by Ferris. The first score of the night. And they play 29 minutes and 28 seconds before anybody broke into the scoring column. Nothing fancy about this. You get in a power eye backfield. You have two backs leading ahead of the runner with the ball and the forward line surging ahead against the goal line defense. And they just won that battle on that play against the smaller defense. Everybody straight ahead charging. One back in front, two backs in front. He gives it to the rear back. Ferris is strong enough to get in the end zone. The extra point attempt by Segrist. Three for three. The extra points, five for five field goals this year. Hasn't missed so far. He's still batting a thousand, and Texas Tech leads seven to nothing. And Jolie Dunn. He has beaten Texas Tech two out of his three years as head coach. And I'll bet he's discouraged over that last drive. Very, very discouraged. The Lobos have to pick up from this point on. They just can't. They just can't let it ride here. Even though they don't get a. Uh, a score this half. They had marched the ball. They had taken over offensively and had gained control that second half. At, but that last drive caught, casts a pallor on things, which the Lobos will have to recover from at halftime if they can't run it back into good position here. So Segrist will be kicking for the Red Raiders, who aren't wearing much red. They were originally called Matadors, and they had uh, red uniforms, and they used to travel a lot. And so a sports editor back in the 30s started calling them the Red Raiders, and that kind of stuck with them. But uh, looks like they're changing their basic color scheme here. So the Lobos will bring it out to their 20. Wind might be letting up just a little bit, but not much. Still feel those flags going out. You know, you might ask, what can you do here with 32 seconds on your own 20-yard line? I would expect them to play it rather conservatively. You're seven points down, but uh, you don't want to take a chance here to, to give Tech another quick score. That would be devastating. It looks like the Lobos are going to just operate conservatively run out the clock. Tech has, I think, one timeout left, but they couldn't do much with it here as the clock is moving. 22 seconds left the first half. Well, I think they did. Now they are going to let it run down. Billy Rucker starts to walk off the field, but he may have to call, let's see, the 27, 25 second clock. It doesn't seem to be running. They just didn't even start the 25 second clock, so that'll be the last play of the first half. Lobos are still in it. So we've played one half here in Lubbock. And as the teams repair to their respective dressing rooms, it's Tech 7. New Mexico, nothing. Tonight we'll be focusing on the student athlete. We'll introduce you to a young man who can create remarkable likenesses using just a pencil and a pad of paper. We'll also meet an avid student of a centuries-old Far Eastern style of ceramic pottery. And we'll take a closer look at a veteran of the UNM offensive line. Oh, by the way, that artist, that potter, and that football player happen to be one and the same person. He's six foot four inch, 286 pound offensive tackle David Lolling, a three year veteran of the WAC trenches. He's been an integral part of one of the league's best offensive lines. But the football field isn't David's only practice area. Most mornings during the school year, you'll find him hard at work inside the halls of the UNM College of Education complex, a place where David develops another craft, one that doesn't involve football pads or pigskin, but rather portraits and porcelain. It's where David Lolly works towards his degree in art education. I decided to go in something I might enjoy doing, 
myself, I enjoy teaching art, the life, making a living out of that. It's not the money, it's just, uh, I just want a job that I would enjoy doing. I guess you can have two hobbies, drawing and pottery, because I enjoy it. Uh, it's not, think about other things, you just concentrate on what you're doing. It's like going into another world almost. David has an affinity for capturing images in pencil. His drawings seem to reflect the gentle nature of this giant of a man, reflections of the things he cherishes most. His subjects might be a favorite movie fantasy about some faraway land, or a likeness of some admired, smoky-voiced song stylist, or perhaps a portrait of a loved one who's played a major role in his formative years. Although David is not a professional artist, he's already seen his talent pay dividends. It's a hobby. It's like something I picked up from my family. But there's still another dimension to David's artistic expression. His studies have introduced him to porcelain and pottery, to an oriental method, one not widely known in the West. It's some 400 years old, and it's a style that's not easy to master. It's hard work. You know, it's hard wedging, it's hard, you know, trying to get the right kind of cylinder. You know, but the finished product is better, and you feel good about the finished product. Same thing like with football. I mean, practices the certain, certain steps you gotta master, and then taking it to a game, you feel good about finally proving that you got it. You know, proving that you mastered that move or that step or that technique to perfection. In any new technique one is trying to perfect, one needs a teacher. David has his coaches on the football field. He's got them in the classroom, too. I'm, I'm David's porcelain coach. Meet Professor Jim Schrubeck, chairman of UNM's art education department. He's David's mentor in the porcelain class, the one who's there with suggestions and tips on touch and technique. Jim Schrubeck is the man who follows David's work as it develops from a lump of clay to a gleaming, rainbow-colored work of art. What I teach here in my porcelain class is the oriental method of working in porcelain, which is, I studied that in Japan, and the tradition itself in Japan is about 400 years old. And I think this is one of the only places in the United States that teaches this kind of method. There are some physical things like uh, uh, wedging the clay, which is like kneading, kneading bread dough, okay, except porcelain clay is a lot more dense and hard. And uh, that's where we contribute part, partly to his physical training in here, because before you put the clay on the wheel, uh, you need to wedge it 400 times, and you develop good uh, arm strength and muscles and that kind of thing. One of the next major steps in David's future is a college degree, and perhaps a shot at professional football, or a profession as an art education teacher. I was told that I could become professional professional football. It's like, I, just, I am striving for it, but hopefully I will have something to fall back on, like the degree to teach art. Either way, I would like to teach art, even if I was to play football, I could still teach art afterwards. David's one of my favorite people from the first time I met him, and uh, it extends beyond the ceramics room in the football field. He's just a great person, he's nice to be around, and he has a great deal of enthusiasm for his artwork, which is one of the essential ingredients for being a teacher, too. Whatever happens on or off the field in the next two seasons, one gets the sense that David Lolly will come out of it a winner, with a sense of style, a sense of art, and a sense of himself. For Channel 14 Sports, I'm Paul Preventure. Hello again, everybody, from Lubbock, where at halftime, Texas Tech leads the Lobos by a score of 7 to nothing. In the background, we see the brand spanking new Texas Tech multi-purpose athletic facility. Now that roof and the lights have been turned on in there tonight for the first time and it's just like the Pontiac Silver Dome. It's uh, polyeth uh, polyurethane and nylon. It's an inflatable membrane kind of a thing and it is held up just by air that blows in there. There are eight blowers. Two of the blowers will hold it up. There are cables that keep it in place. The cables raise right up with the, the polyurethane and nylon roof. The cables raise right up only to a certain point, and then they contain everything, and they keep it in place. We'd like to show you what that polyurethane looks like. I had a talk today with the uh, construction superintendent, and he, uh, he gave us a little piece of the stuff. And uh, in a minute, we'll, we'll show you. Here it is right here. As you see, it's, uh, it's about a 16th to a 30th 
second of an inch in thickness. You cannot tear the stuff. It's very, very tough. There are two layers of this stuff, uh, a little bit of air in between for insulation, and that's what uh, is forming the roof of the multipurpose athletic facility. Now you say, well, what happens, uh, what keeps it up? Well, you have slightly more air pressure internally than you do on the outside, just a little bit more from the blowers inside. If the wind increases on the outside, there are computers that tell the blowers to work a little harder, to blow a little harder. If you get a snowstorm coming in, the computers tell the blowers to warm up the air a little so that the snow will melt when it hits that roof. So it's quite an interesting thing. And inside of that uh, multipurpose athletic facility, they have uh, half of a football field. They have a circular track around the football field. It's 250 yards long. They have a 60 yard straightaway so they can do a lot of things indoors. That uh, roof is 300 feet in diameter, which is something like 70,000 square feet, which is uh, equal to about one and a third football fields in area. So that is the $6 billion multipurpose athletic facility here at Lubbock on the Texas Tech campus. We see 35 high school bands from the area surrounding Lubbock here on band day. Let's see if we can listen for a minute. Everybody. This is Connie Alexander uh, along with Gary Ness. Well, we came on at the beginning of the game, Gary, and we gave a lot of hype about the game, about how exciting it was going to be, and we got a 7-0 game. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it, there hasn't been a lot of scoring. There sure hasn't, and really there hasn't been a lot of offense on either side. Texas Tech uh, had the edge on the offense in the first quarter, UNM in the second quarter, but uh, the disappointing thing was that last drive following the nice punt return by number 81 Thurman there, but, uh, but really it's anybody's game, and and this game still might break loose into the barn burner we expected. Well, the Mask Rider is enjoying it for the moment, but maybe the Lobos will do something about that uh, when the second half starts here before too long. Uh, they tell us uh, down in the truck that it's time to sell something, so we're going to pause right here for a commercial. Back here on the beautiful campus of Texas Tech at halftime. The Lobos are trailing 7-0 to the Red Raiders of the Southwest Conference. Red Raiders who last week went down to Miami and lost 61-11 while the Lobos were being beaten by BYU up in uh, Provo in a heartbreaker. And uh, the Texas Tech Red Raiders have come back here tonight to perform quite well, but uh, it hasn't been an awesome performance. They have outgained the Lobos in the first half, 184 to 125 yards. Well, neither of them you would brag about, that's for sure. The defenses have taken control. It, you know, Connie, the, the thing that impresses me the most is we see the, the tech cheerleaders out there with their, what you call those, cowbells or some sort of bells. But the, the, the most impressive player on the field to me thus far has been number 69, Tank Jackson the uh, defensive tackle for Texas Tech. I think he's been outstanding, penetrating the Lobos line of scrimmage. And on the other side, Calvin Riggs, the defensive end to the weak side of the formation, he has caught several plays from behind. He's been, he's forced Billy at Rucker, for instance, to throw long before he was ready to throw, and have forced, uh, uh, forced some, some, some uh, uh, losses in yardage as well. So the, the interesting thing has been Texas Tech's defense, the Lobos have played great defense. Fred Mady made a, a play that this uh, tonight that uh, he would brag about to his grandchildren, getting a handoff in the Texas Tech backfield, which deep in Lobo territory, which stopped a, a potential drive for Texas Tech. So the defenses really have kind of taken charge in what we thought was going to be an offensive game. 
Well, in the pregame, we, we did mention uh, Texas Tech's very good defense, and you mentioned Spike Dykes, their defensive coordinator, and we've heard people around Lubbock and yesterday and today talking about the very fine Texas Tech uh, defense. Uh, and they have done a good job on the Lobos run and shoot. The Lobos came into the game averaging something like uh, 340 a game, I think, and they've only gotten 125 yards in the first half to the Red Raiders' total offense of 184. The Lobos have 53 on the ground and um, 72 yards uh, through the air passing. And uh, the Texas Tech team has passed for... Uh, a net of 51 yards, but they've rushed for 133, and those big tech fullbacks have made the difference in, yes. in the eyebacks. Against, uh, especially off of draw action, where they let the defense penetrate and then either trap or run by you. So that's been the that's been their bread and butter play this first half. Garnett had 61 yards on eight carries, and Ferris had 50 yards on seven carries. So they both have averages of better than seven yards. Yes. We watched uh, captains come on the field for the Lobos. We're not far from kickoff, but the Lobos have to stop the penetration on the line of scrimmage by the Texas Tech defense. That's the key to, to winning this game if they're going to make something offensively. And remember, the Lobos won the coin toss, but they chose to defer and take their choice. So at the second half, they get their choice where they take the ball or whatever. We'll be back in just a minute. So we are back in Lubbock. Number one for the Red Raiders, Eddie Anderson. Outstanding receiver. There's your story as we go into the second half. The Red Raiders leading by seven. Billy Rucker was the leading Lobo rusher, 11 for 25 in the first half. He completed six out of nine passes for 72 yards. He was sacked twice. Burgess carried six times but was contained for 15 yards only. Kyer carried one time for 12 for the Lobos. Tolliver connected on only 7 out of 20 passes. We look at McKayer, who will return the second half kickoff for the Lobos. Interesting that Mathis is not out there to return it. Tolliver hit 7 out of 20 for 51 yards. And we start the second half as the kick by Segrist is lofted high to McKayer at the 3. Oh, ho, he is disconnected at the 17. Putting in the first half, Keller averaged 50.8. Burns averaged 42.6. Leading receivers were Walker of Tech and Rogers of New Mexico. Each team lost a fumble. There were no interceptions in the first half. First downs, Tech won that 12 to 7, and they led the scoreboard 7 0, and the Lobos will operate first and 10 at their own 17 as we start the back half of the game. Lobos were penalized 2 for 15, Tech 3 for 26 in the first half. Basically, a pretty even game. Oh my, a kick by Mathis, recovered by Arbon, back around the 3. Lobos have been free from any type of uh, loss on their pitches, pitch outs this, this season thus far. And really, I thought this was going to happen sooner or later. Of course, you don't want it to happen when you're inside your own 20-yard line, but such was the case. Keith Arbon did a nice job to get back and recover that, give them at least a chance to punt it out of there. A big loss of about 13. It's second and 23 for the Wolfpack. They have triple receivers to the left side. Rucker going to pass out of the end zone. Good work by Billy Rucker, and he gets close to a first down up there. Wow. Great job of running by Billy Rucker. He saw the, saw the loss of containment on him, and he kept the ball as Go close ahead. to a first yard, first down. And as we see, the hit was made there close to the uh, New Mexico bench, and I think Joe Lee, you saw him pointing out there, he was wondering why a flag wasn't thrown. But Rucker took it within one yard of a first down, and it'll be third down coming at the Lobo 26-yard line.
little play action pass, option pass to Ned James for the first down, up close to the 30, Mitchell on the hit. That's an interesting call on a third and one deep in your own territory to fake the dive and pull out and, and make that short hitch pass, but it worked, and the Lobos have that first down above their 30, and this is a big possession for them if, against the win if they can get it in there and, and score. First and 10, Lobos from their 31. They trail 7-0 after one minute of the third quarter. Billy Rucker doing a good job of getting back to the line of scrimmage. Scott Maney, the center, is the Lobo slow getting up. Number 50. Credit Brad Hastings with the tackle. And it'll be second and ten. And Scott still looks like he's favoring that uh, right leg a little bit as he goes back to the huddle. So he may have to be replaced. Steve Parr will move over and play center now. He's been the left guard. Parr, number 61 at center, who incidentally does the snapping job on punts and does a good job. Those guys rarely get mentioned. Here's a flag. Rucker in trouble. Rucker dumped at the 20 by Hastings, the middle linebacker on the blitz. Now, I beg your pardon, it was Michael Johnson, 42, on the hit. But there was a flag on the play. You know, Michael Johnson, number 42, is just too quick to escape containment on. When he comes, you need a short receiver in the flat. And there was no short receiver in the flat for Billy to unload to, so he had no choice. To, he had to either outrun Johnson, which would probably uh, end up with a bigger loss. or, or Illegal procedure. Offense declined. Third down. So they wisely took the loss. They put it on the 22. The Lobos must go to their 41. It's third and 19. Third and 19. Burgess. Ten yards short of the first down. Fourth down coming where Rieger made the tackle. Billy was under a lot of pressure there. He barely was able to get that away, even though it was a screen pass. Now watch this. Just evades two people, and Burgess does a nice bit of running here. It actually got out there too quick that the, the lineman could not get out in, in time to make the blocks for Burgess. Looks like uh, Leonard the shaken Jones. player is Leonard Jones, a uh, senior from Fort Worth. He's the rover back for the Texas Tech team. It's going to be fourth down and 10 for the Lobos from their 31-yard line, and Keller has gone out there for the putting situation. Don't miss October's Friday Night Fights presentation when undefeated Tony TNT Tucker, 31 wins, no losses, squares off against James Broadax Broad for the USBA Heavyweight Championship title. Catch all that action Friday, October 26th at 11 p.m. on KGSW-TV Channel 14. The wind has changed a little bit. It would be coming in at sort of a quartering kind of a headwind from the southeast as the Lobos head to the south. And it's a good boot by Keller. A fair catch is signaled. A tech bounce and out of bounds down around the 21 or 22 yard line. So with 12-12 left third quarter, Lobos still trail 7-0. And Texas Tech is going to gain possession of the ball. What an outstanding punt by Ron Keller. That had a, a great bounce to it, got out of bounds. I think there's a flag. I don't see one any place. No, I didn't either, but there's a discussion. Interference against New Mexico. Okay, there was a fair catch signaled, and they are ruling that the Lobos interfered with the opportunity to make the fair catch. Five-yard fair catch interference. First down. We're going to take a quick break. Lobos down by seven. Here's a picture of the reason for the penalty. 
He's giving a fair catch signal right there, and you'll see a Lobo within two yards of him, which you're not supposed to do after he's made the fair catch signal, and that's the reason for the five-yard penalty. And now live action. Incomplete, short of Eddie Anderson on first down for Tech from its own 36-yard line early in the third period. Credit the defensive play there to Philip Vaughn, who forced... Uh, who forced the quarterback to release the ball early and he short hopped it into the receiver. Second and ten. Raiders in their 36 out of the eye with a slot left and the right end is split. Pitch pass to Thurman. And Tory Edwards grabbed him by the right ankle. Uh, an old-fashioned shoestring tackle that might have saved six. That was all Thurman. Thurman did that all on his own. The defense forced him back into the inside, and he still got positive yardage out of that. It was a great play by the little Thurman. Smurf, they call him. And he got a first down at his 48-yard line. Now watch him. He's forced to the inside by Kirkendall. Goes all the way inside Vaughn. Finally, Joe Sells has to come over and help on the tackle. to the fullback for another first down at the Lobo 35 it's actually the eye back instead of the fullback Ferris he looks like a fullback at 220 and 511 he's a sophomore and Garnett their other big ground gainer is also a sophomore Texas Tech has a rosy future. And he showed some ability to catch the ball. What Tech did was flood that side of the field with three receivers. And it's hard to cover three receivers to the side of the field. The middle one uh, was Garnett was open. This is Ferris to the 30. Or Garnett to the 30-yard line. He got about five. Kirkendall on the tackle. Garnett, 43, was the leading rusher in the first half. Eight for 61, which we mentioned a little earlier. And that draw play continues to plague the New Mexico defense. They actually closed on it a little better than they have been, but still a five-yard game. You can see the wind is letting up a little bit. Oh, Gloria was whipping pretty strong at the kickoff. This could be it. That's Walker. Six. With Walker's great speed, you can't allow him much room. Crumb, crumb number six leaves him a good cushion. But what you have to do is, while that ball's in the air, you have to make up ground. But the ball, that strong throw gets in there quick. As Crumb comes up, Walker evades him, and there's nobody can catch him. Laura giving chase. Sigrist converts. Texas Tech, 14. The Lobos, nothing. Sigrist, a sophomore from Lubbock. We'll be kicking off for the Red Raiders who enjoy the wind here in the third period and they enjoy a 14 to nothing lead right now after the 30-yard pass. Jarvis McHire, 6-foot, 191-pound junior from Port Arthur, Texas, awaiting the kickoff from his goal line. Oh, my. He is swarmed by Texas Tech Red Raiders at the 15-yard line. Would New Mexico ever like to have good field position? Field position has been a thorn in their side tonight. As we see a flag down. Offside against New Mexico and a personal foul against uh, Texas Tech. The foul against one. Now he All indicates right. personal foul against New Mexico. So he has indicated offside and personal foul both against New Mexico. Hastings, the captain, is a twice consensus all Southwest Conference linebacker. If he makes it this year, he would be only the fourth player to do that in the Southwest Conference. Which means he would join the ranks of some great ones like Tommy Nobus, Ed Giannini. 
Simonini had seven. Simonini. Okay, let's see what they're going to do with it here. It's a penalty of half the distance to the Lobo goal line. Offsides, receiving team, declined. Dead ball, personal foul, accepted half the distance. First down, White. He pretty well uh, can figure out the story just from what he said. Uh, the Lobos were offside. Tech decided to take the results of the kickoff sure. uh, to the out to the about 16 yard line, and then after the ball was dead, the Lobos committed a personal foul, and that's the reason they got penalized half the distance to the goal. And so the field position grows from bad to worse, but it's up to the offense to do something now. They have to establish themselves. That's Matheson, the long motion. Rucker escapes once more. Rucker escapes to the 23-yard line, and he almost gets the first down out of that situation. Texas Tech went on a 64-yard five-play drive for their touchdown, which was topped by the 30-yard touchdown pass from Tolliver to Walker. New Mexico's best offense of the night has been when Billy gets flushed and scrambles on his own. Now, that's not your offense by design. That's using the, the talents of your uh, personnel, and Billy's been able to do that quite handily. Six feet, 192, Billy Rucker. Rucker really hit as he pitched it out to Rogers, who turns the corner close to the first down at the Lobo 25. Oh, my, Billy Rucker really got massaged on that one. When you come at your quarterback like that, they need to either run an outside beer play or they'll come back with some misdirections. In other words, some counter option. Now, they showed the counter option from the wishbone once in the first half and the first time they showed it in a game this year. As we see the measurement, it is still oh, less than a yard short of the first down. It'll be third down coming. 9.38 left in the third quarter. There's still a lot of football to go here in Lubbock. But the Lobos have a pretty good hill to climb as they are behind 14 to nothing after a 7 to nothing halftime disadvantage. But remember the comeback they made two years ago. They were down uh, by 12 points and won by five over in Albuquerque. And then, of course, you recall they were up by 21 here last year and lost by one. So anything can happen. Third down and a foot. And the first down by Rucker to his 25 as Billy got the mileage. Well, he put his head down there. That was a quarterback sneak all the way. Usually go on a, on a short count like that to try to hope to get the defense on their heels, and I think that's what happened. It should be a first. Well, I say it should be a first down. They may have not signaled. Yes, they have. First and 10, Lobos at their 25. This might be a pivotal part of the entire season for the Lobos. Well, it's going to be uphill from here if they don't establish something. There's Mathis, and he was about to find some work and room, and then James Mosley, a 215-pound sophomore, grabbed him by the shoulder pad and dumped him at the Lobo 32. But it was a good gain of seven yards. You're right. Had he not, had Mosley not reached it behind and get grabbed him by the shirt, uh, Mathis would have gone a lot further than the seven. That was the counter option, by the way, Connie. Second time they've shown it. They're in the run and shoot formation right now against a 4-3 umbrella defense. And Burgess is tried for the first down, and he is close as he nears the 35. And once more, 235-pound Brad Hastings, the heart of the Texas Tech defense, makes the hit. He's out of Arlington, Texas, where he was a high school All-American. And he has averaged seven unassisted tackles over the past two years. It is third and less than a yard for the Lobos, just inside their 35-yard line. Brad Hastings could be an All-American. And this is Mathis, and he's got the first down up to the 38-yard line. 
First down for the Lobos. Uh, important conversion. Hastings and Mitchell on the hit. Important is right. They had to have that first down if they wanted us to, to maintain possession, and they got it. You know that Hastings, number 44, we see in your screen. One of the reasons he makes so many his tackles, aside from his great ability and experience, is the middle linebacker on a 4-3 defense is protected by his lineman. He should make a lot of tackles. Burgess for about three, and Mosley makes the tackle. This live Lobo football broadcast on Channel 14 is brought to you in part by Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. There's no slowing down with the Silver Bullet. At the Lobo 42, second and seven. You know, Vaughn Simmons just replaces uh, Kevin Burgess there, and I wonder if he's uh, slowed down a little bit by that ankle injury. Burgess, that is. Mathis in motion. And Rucker is down behind the line of scrimmage by Terry Lynch, a 225-pound sophomore from Morton, Texas. That gives cause for celebration by the Raider defense. The Lobos are facing third and long. Now, you know, Billy didn't read that. If he had read that, Vaughn Simmons was, the tackle did not close on Vaughn Simmons. Either he had called a play previously that was not the option, or he didn't read it properly. Third and ten. Intercepted at the 44-yard line. Intercepted by Leonard Jones. There may be a flag, though. Yes, there is. Holding against the Lobos. So that will surely be refused by Texas Tech as they will want possession of that ball. As Leonard Jones makes the interception on the pass that was intended for Terrence Mathis. Holding, offense, declined, first down. Well, let's see. Now, there's the fake to Vaughn Simmons, who takes out the tackle. Seems to have time to throw. He threw a curl pattern, though, and that's not what Mathis ran, and so the Tech ends up with the football. Tech first and 10 from its 44, and again, Tech has good field position. And a curl pattern, and it's incomplete. As Travis Price, the intended receiver, he's caught half a dozen. He's a great athlete. Uh, in high school, as a uh, quarterback, in his junior year, he passed and ran for 38 touchdowns in one year. Converted quarterback playing at uh, what they call flex end. He was also a state champ in the 110-yard hurdles and the 300-yard hurdles. At number 10, Travis Price. Raider Red. And the Lobo mascot, Lucy. the draw play and it's a first down by Gray of Texas Tech tackle by Umdenstock well what they're trying to do is as far as throw the ball is flood the one side of the field with three receivers as far as run the ball they're still running that draw in it, and they're going to run it until New Mexico stops it so we can expect to see more of that unless New Mexico is able to shut it down first and ten on the 44 an interesting turnaround Tolliver who didn't do much passing in the first half is three for four for about 60 yards in this half. He was only seven for 20 for 51 yards first half. <laughs> Excuse me, that's Garnett. And he whacks off a chunk down to the 37, and it's going to be second and three where Laura made the tackle. And they trapped the middle. The trap, just the quick fullback trap up the middle, and the draw action has been all they've needed to run. And this half, flood the receipt, flood uh, three receivers to one side. Five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Tech leads 14-0, and they're controlling the ball. And all the time they're doing this, uh, it's the same thing as playing defense against the Lobos. And the bomb looking for Walker. And it is incomplete as Crum performed the coverage, number six. Crum fell down, turning for the ball. He actually had better position. He was ahead of the receiver. But when he fell down, that took out the receiver as well. But the ball was clearly out of overthrown, so there was no 
penalty call. Had it been close, now let's watch here. As Crum falls, now the receiver falls. Had the ball landed in the area instead of the back of the end zone, there might have been a call there. What Gary is saying is it was not a catchable forward pass. It has to be catchable in order to be called interference. Gray carries to about the Lobo 31, and it'll be another Texas Tech first down where Cole and Laura combine for the tackle. Raiders 14, Wolfpack nothing. At big number 54 is Aubrey Richard, 250-pound senior tackle from Hereford, Texas. Only about three seniors on the Tech starting offense. First and ten. Completion to Sprinkles, the big tight end at the 29. This is KGSW-TV, Channel 14. Sprinkles, his fifth catch of the year. He had a great game down at Miami. He's only a freshman, 6'5 and 220. And Kirkendall made the hit, the 200-pound strong safety out of Longview. And what a, what a tackle that was because that forced him to uh, cough it up and the thus the incompletion. Second down. And 10 at the 32-yard line. And Tolliver throws it away. This Lobo football excitement on Channel 14 brought to you in part by Ajax Mobile Homes. We trade for anything of value. Very important third and ten here. The Lobos are going to get it and stay in this game. They're going to have to stop them and without a score. And this is the time, third and ten. Third down, ten to go. At the Lobo 32. Walker at the 19. stock on the tackle. Another first down for the Raiders. Well, you have to give uh, Tolliver, the quarterback, some credit on. That is not what had been planned. He did some scrambling there, and Walker is just so hard to stay with, man for man, and he found him in the middle of the field for the completion and the first down. Now watch. He wants to roll to his left, but now he has to go back right as Philip Vaughn chases, and he flicks it with his wrist to Walker. First down at the Lobo 19. Gray. 77 Mady, the 6'1", 246-pound junior, made the shirt tail tackle along with Tom Cole, number 56. Holding called on the Raiders. Gain of a yard. Cashaway conferring with referee Doyle Jackson. The Lobos need all the breaks they can get, and they are going to accept a 10-yard penalty against Texas Tech. Holding. Offense. Still first down. So it's going to be first down and 20. Well, now you may want to assign some linebackers to that running back and try to stop this draw play here that from hurting them. That's Garnett again. Well, he got back uh, the penalty yardage and one more to boot before Gassaway and Umdenstock, the linebackers, brought him down. Well, there it was. No penetration on the line of scrimmage, and bingo, that right up the middle. Second down at about 10. Near the Lobo 19-yard line. And a little fullback pop play by Garnett. And he gets uh, about three, maybe. Philip Vaughn. 220-pound 
Right outside linebacker makes the stop on the Lobo 17. There's Vaughn number 45, a 6'3 sophomore from Batesville, Mississippi. Looks like he's going to be a good man to have around. You know, I believe so. He's a hard tackler, Phillip is. 6'3, 220. Third down at about eight. And Gray. Gray with some good moves, and he's going to go, and he's got six. But well, there is a flag back at the 14. There is a flag at the 14-yard line. If we get to see a replay, you'll see why he made the corner so easily with Mr. Thurman running behind the uh, cornerback to, to let him get in. Now watch this. Watch from the top of your screen, number 81, Thurman. If we can see him. See, he came behind Crum. There you saw him. He came behind Crum, knocked him in. That's why Gray uh, got outside. Crum was the contain. Made it look easy. But that's not permitted. A penalty against Texas Tech. It'll take it out to the 28. Personal foul. Clipping against the offense. 15 yards. But then if you were 5'3 and 130 pounds, how else would you block? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he, is, he is something else. Third down and 19 to go. So the Raiders have been penalized for holding 10 yards and clipping 15. That has hurt them mightily here late in the third quarter. Screen pass, and it is dropped by Garnett. He was too anxious to hit downfield, took his eyes off the ball, and it's going to be fourth down, and the field goal kicker, Segrist, is going on. Now, Segrist has kicked a 43-yarder this year. This one will be 45 yards. He should be helped by the wind. It is essentially a tailwind. So his range on this season is 43. In the spring, he kicked two 62-yarders in spring scrimmage. Segrist. He's a good bet to add three. No good. So the Lobos will take over, trailing by 14. So the Lobos will have the ball now. After the unsuccessful field goal try, the Lobos get it at their own 28-yard line, trailing by 14, two and a half minutes to go in the third period. Boy, Rucker uh, doing a good job of elusiveness. And he gets out of bounds and stops the clock at his own 48. Rucker with a 20-yard scramble, a first down, used up 12 seconds, and that is a pretty big play. There again is the best play of their offense tonight, Billy Scrambling. But of course, what do you do? Why is that? Well, if you can break the contain, which he does on both sides of the field, he breaks contain coming to the bottom. Now, somebody, I couldn't see his number, stayed with the block real well and permitted him to cut upfield. Now he'll break contain on the opposite side. A little head fake there. Great piece of running. First down, Lobos at their 48. Draw play to McHire, who knifes to the Tech 46. We're talking about the possession of the ball. Texas Tech has had it 57 plays. The Lobos have had it 39 plays. And that difference has been made up this half because the Lobos had it in terms of time slightly more than the Tech did in the first half. And Burgess appears to be the fellow with the leg problem. That is Burgess, number 33. So Dean out there to help him, along with his assistant Larry Willock. And Burgess had a sprained left ankle coming into the game. Yes, he, and that's the foot that he's carrying up, so perhaps he aggravated that injury some. Let's hope it's not serious. A little orphan Annie there. Uh -huh. Second down. Four to go. Burgess eight carries for 24 yards before going out just now. Simmons replaces him, and Simmons carves off maybe a first down near the Tech 42. Schwartner made the tackle. 
very close. But you know, now that uh, Billy breaks, uh, runs the ball up the middle, and the draw play was successful with Burgess, that slows down the rush on that front wall, defensive front of Texas Tech. They need half a yard with third coming. James, number 17, at the top of your picture. Rodgers in motion. There's a fumble! The Raiders have it. And it's Jones, number 28, with the ball. Leonard Jones. As it was jarred loose from Rucker. And so the Raiders come up with the turnover. Right as the handoff, there's what you call the ride. Uh, he had pulled it out, but camera's following Simmons. Fumble occurs out of the range of the camera. We don't know if he was hit. But Tech ends up with the ball. Lobos have lost two fumbles and the Raiders have lost one. Ferris, the fullback. Philip Vaughn on the tackle. It's at the 41 of the Raiders, and it'll be second down and six. And we're in the final minute of the third period with the score Tech 14 in New Mexico nothing. Billy Joe Tolliver to the line of scrimmage. 6-1, sophomore from Boyd, Texas. He was a four-sport star there. Pitched seven no-hitters as a junior on the baseball team. And he has a completion of a Price at midfield. And Price goes out of the 41-yard line. In Lobo territory. And another Raider first down. Lara on the tackle for New Mexico. All right, now here's the flood pattern to the bottom of your screen. There are three receivers on this side. Normally a linebacker is, is the one who has to pick up the back out of the backfield. Rice from Wink, Texas. First and 10, 41. Tolliver. Kirkendall defending against Price. Bouvier Dale, number eight, is into the game for the Raiders now. He's a 200-pound junior fullback. Exactly the same play to the top of the screen that they had run previously for the first down. Same pass play. Second and ten. Thirteen seconds left. Third quarter. Thurman decked at the 34 and that will probably be the last play of the quarter after three quarters the Raiders still lead 14 to nothing of the Red Raiders on the Lobo 34 they need three yards for a first down we've seen comebacks in the last two years the Lobos are in comeback position. Tory Edwards. With help, trying to fight off James Gray's bullish charge for a first down. They're going to measure. It'll be very close at the Lobo 31 with fourth down coming if he failed for the first. First downs. Texas Tech 20, the Lobos 9. So the, the Raiders got eight first downs in the third quarter to the Lobos two. First down, and that's their 21st of the night. Total yardage, Raiders 329, Lobos 197. So you have to say that that Raider defense has done a good job against the Lobos. Jeez. Tolliver has com completed 13 out of 33. He is six for 13 this half. He has a total of 149 yards through the air. And the Raiders have about uh, 180 yards on the ground. So they have a first down. And Ferris works inside the 30-yard line. And Cole and Vaughn drop him. Well, they finally closed on the sprint draw well there. 
You know, the defense has actually done a fairly good job. They stopped uh, uh, Tech on the previous drive before the end of the third quarter and forced them into a field goal situation after they had actually done a fairly good job. They stopped uh, uh, Tech on the previous drive before the end of the third quarter and forced them into a field goal situation after they had a gold goal. Uh, and they're called upon to do it again. At the 29, second down and eight. Price. Stopped by Gassaway. Price, who had caught half a dozen coming into the game, is getting warmed up out here tonight. This is a great throw by Tolliver because now watch, he'll get the ball without having to break stride, and that makes that makes it tough for Kirkendall. Kirkendall, try, if he'd have had to adjust to the ball at all, Kirkendall would have been right there at the time. But a great throw by Tolliver. Another Raider first down, just outside the Lobo 16. Gray, but a flag, stops the play. Illegal procedure on Tech. Now this is where Tech had some problems uh, with some penalties on the previous position before the end of the third quarter. The slot back or wing back started forward to make his block a little early. The Lobo defense has to take advantage. False starts, offense. Still first down. False start. Tech's been penalized five times for 50 yards, and the Lobo's four for 27. First and 15. Intended for Walker. 13-18 to go. The clock becomes increasingly a factor. New Mexico should hope that uh, Texas Tech continues to do that, throw the short, quick out pattern, because that doesn't run time off the clock. And Donnie Gassaway stepped in the path of that, and uh, it was a well-thrown ball just to get it out of bounds and not take the loss. Thurman, the 130-pounder is the wide out to the right side to the wide side of the field on second and 15. Looking for Thurman, got him at the 10. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Watch from behind, watch Fred Mady coming from behind here. But just able to release the ball, Billy Joe. Nice pattern. Well, he, he really has a strong arm. At the 10, third down and three. First by Umdenstock. That was the third down try. They're putting it down just outside the seven. It'll be fourth and almost a yard to go. But they're going to measure it. Just to be sure, Fred Beatty has his bonnet off out there. And Umdenstock now number 51. Boy, they've worked hard this season. Oh, they really have. They've played very, very well under the circumstances. And These this, Lobos really need to be saluted for the effort that they've made. You know, they've, they've played three tough games on the road. They haven't played in front of their own fans. They haven't played in front of their own band. They haven't heard their own fight song yet. Yet they've really, uh, they've really played hard. So it's fourth and a yard. I don't see the Tech field goal kicker. They're in a power eye and now shifting into their usual set. And 
broken up in the end zone, and the Lobos will take over. Look who that is, number seven. If you don't recognize that number, you might recognize the man. That's Kenneth Whitehead. What a job. Quick break. The Lobos behind by 14. And another look at uh, the unsuccessful fourth down attempt by the Raiders. Number seven, Kenneth Whitehead on the scene defensively. And now, live action. And it is dropped by Ned James up on the 17-yard line. And Bart Rieger was patrolling the secondary for the Red Raiders. Let's take a quick look at the official third quarter statistics. Total offense, Raiders 326, Lobos 204. Turnovers are a big factor. Lobos three, that's an interception and two lost fumbles. Raiders have lost one fumble. Raiders with a good balanced attack. And the Lobos pretty balanced. Simmons in motion as Burgess is out of the game apparently with uh, a re-injured ankle. Rucker out to about the 12 where Mosley brings him down. Lobos in the first three quarters rushed for 118 and passed for 86. Billy Rucker's rushed for 63 and he has passed for 86 yards on eight completions in 12 passes. He's had one intercepted and Rucker has been sacked three times and that tells something about that Red Raider defense as they have sacked Billy Rucker three times and stopped him numerous other times for very little gain. He's third and about four. And the Lobos are going to have to punt as Michael Johnson was on his toes defensively and pounced on Simmons. All right, let's give the Red Raider defense credit. This is a play that they've used a couple of times in third down situations successfully. But Michael Johnson was on the Simmons man for man, and he got there almost as soon as the ball. Fourth down and about four. Keller putting with the win. Here in the fourth quarter with 11 minutes of playing time remaining. Fair catch signaled and made at the Tech 49-yard line. So we'll be back with the Raiders. A disconsolate Joe Lee Dunn. His team down by 14. They've just given up the football. And Tech with good field position at its 49-yard line. And here's the hitch to Thurman. And Vaughn tripped him up from behind, and Kirkendall came along just to make sure. You had a good camera angle there to see number 45, Philip Vaughn, chase that play from behind. And what an effort by somebody like that. You know, he could turn his back and watch the play after the ball's thrown over his head, but he just chased it down from behind. This Raider defense has really contained the Lobos. Burgess, nine carries for 26. And Tolliver throwing deep. Good coverage by Whitehead on Walker. Boy, he stayed with him, shoulder to shoulder, shadow to shadow. He sure did, and there was a blitz on, which, which forced Tolliver to throw the ball up early. But I've got to give Tolliver credit. The ball was about. Now watch. He has to release it running backwards off his back foot because there's, once again, Fred Mady, great pressure. But the seven, ball was up there. Mady. Little underthrown. Little underthrown. The old saying, the best pass defense is a hard rush. It worked that time. First and ten, I check it second and ten on the 40-yard line of the Lobos. Another blitz. And overthrowing Price to bring up third and ten. Well, you know, we've seen it, the heavy pressure here two downs in a row, and and Tolliver doesn't seem to, uh, well, no quarterback delivers the ball on target every time they have to hurry it. Tolliver 16 for 40 for 184 yards. It's only 40%. But he's getting about 11 yards uh, gain per completion. Nice lunging catch by Gray at the Lobo 36, but it's going to be fourth down. 
Well, it seems like the defense is doing their part. I've got to give them credit. Once again, they stopped them after, after uh, Tech had good field position. The punting unit comes on, and Burns will kick. Riggs hustling out there a little late, and Texas Tech calls for a timeout. We have nine minutes and 51 seconds to go, and the Raiders still have that 14-point advantage. Back to action here as Burns will punt. Boy, Texas Tech bounce, and they kill it on the Lobo one-yard line. So now the Lobos are backed up to the cliff. The Red Raiders leading by 14, but they haven't been able to throw the knockout punch. Not Three times in a row, the Lobos have stopped them. It's not as though the Lobos haven't had chances in this second half, and I, I give credit to the defense, the Lobo defense, for keeping them in the game. Great coverage here. Watch this stop. So the Lobos 99 yards away. 9.42 left in the game. almost caught for a safety and was it was precarious he almost could have been called for intentional grounding on that situation and once again Calvin Riggs is chasing the play from behind he is an excellent pass rusher from behind the plate now he had pressured the quarterback six times in the two games previously here he comes Billy knows he's there Second down. And Mathis, zero. Eddie Kittle, the first defender there. It's third and ten from the one. Now that was an inside reverse play. What they tried to do is get the defense flowing with the flow of the backs and, and run a short counter back to the uh, back away from that with Mathis. But, but uh, Jackson boy saw held her, or hold her ground. fourth and ten and there is a flag upfield at the 18 yard line could it be interference the officials in conference up there Part of these officials are Southwest Conference and part of them are from the WAC. Holding on the Raiders. That'll probably be a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, from the one. The discussion was whether or not it was a catchable pass. Evidently, they thought it was. Let's hear his call. The penalty takes it out to the 11-yard line. The signal holding. And the holding will have occurred somewhere in the neighborhood of where the... Where we saw the receivers running, but we could not... It was after... The camera was after the uh, holding. And it's a first down. Hastings wants a review. And Billy Rucker is there to plead the Lobo case. That's right. And a lawyer for the plaintiff and a lawyer for the defendant there.
first down. And 10 from the 11-yard line. Good catch by Ned James for a first down out to the 23-yard line with 8.41 to play. Nice catch by James in traffic, and that ball had to be thrown right in there without any margin for error by Billy Rucker. He caught seven for 154 yards and a touchdown last year, did Ned James. He's a converted quarterback and a fine athlete, six feet and 180 pounds, a senior. So the Lobos, who were almost facing fourth and one, are now out to their 23. The fourth and 10 from the one. And Rucker works it out to his 38-yard line for another first down. Look at the clock, 8.19 to go. There is time if the Lobos can keep the offense oiled. Well, you don't mind running the wishbone or the option series when you get chunks of yardage like that even in the time situation. Look at that big nose guard, Jackson, 290, opposite the center. Complete to Mathis, to the Tech 39-yard line. Maney is back in at center now after being shaken up. Boyd Cowan on the tackle, and Mathis is getting it in gear. What are they doing differently? Nobody's pressuring Billy. They're finally keeping the penetration from the line of scrimmage. Mathis, the Lobos' leading receiver. Boy, the Lobos have moved it 60 yards now in just a few plays. And Rodgers does his juggling act and then takes it on to the 26-yard line. He walks, he talks, <laughs> and he catches it. <laughs> Glenn is a very steady, reliable player. And look at Vaughn Simmons' block on the... Whoops! Gets out of that. Nice pass by Billy. At the 27 of the Raiders and the Lobos for the first time tonight are really clicking. 7.25 left in the game. Simmons finds Moonlight. He touched at the 25. Vaughn Simmons on the carry in place of Burgess, who has an apparently re-injured ankle. Johnson and Jackson are the tacklers. Good call. Vaughn Simmons has great speed if he gets in the open there, but he got tripped up going through the line of scrimmage. The clock is ticking away. 6.55 to go. Second and eight. Raider 25. Touchdown! And the Lobos score on a 99-yard drive. The Lobos on a 99-yard drive to make it 14-6 with 6.43 left. And the touchdown pass to, Rucker, to Mathis from Rucker. On target. On target. Now, he doesn't retreat. This is a short retreat, but they hold him out long enough for him to get the ball away. Perfectly thrown in there. Nice reception by Mathis. Mathis beats Skirlark. Bibbo will try the extra point. It's good. So we have 6.43 to go, and now it's a 14-7 ball. Mathis tonight has five catches for 99 yards and a touchdown. And the Lobos went 99 yards on that touchdown drive, and they consumed only about eight plays in so doing. And for a change, we get to see the Lobos in a comeback role. You know, they've been trying to hold these. Here we have them in a comeback role. Touchback. 
So now the Lobo defense has contained Texas Tech the last three times. Yes, they have. Now if they can rise to the occasion here, there are six minutes and 43 seconds to go. That's a lot of playing time. Yes, it is. And the Lobos defense has done that twice inside the 10. So they have averted two scores. So if they, no matter what the offense does, if they come back to win it, you have to give part of that credit to the Lobo defense tonight. Mathis. Wiping his face there, number 15. Enjoying that touchdown, number eight, Shane Hall in the foreground. And the Raiders go from their 20. And the pass is to Anderson. Anderson is nailed from behind at the 32-yard line. He got a first down. Torrey Edwards, 47. Gassaway, 46 on the scene. Penalties have hurt the Raiders tonight. They've been penalized 10 times for 60 yards. Lobos four times for 27. It's on the 33, let's call it, in Tech property. Tech wasn't afraid to throw the ball on first down when, they went to, when they'd like to eat up the clock, were they? They sure weren't. Lumpenstock had his hands on it. There was a hard rush up front by 78, Danny Douglas. He's a youngster from Lubbock, 6'5 and 260. Now watch, Danny, if he gets his hands up, you see he forces the quarterback to lob the ball a little bit. And what a groan. Did you hear that groan by this audience when Umdenstock tipped the ball? Second and 10, Raiders at their 33. 6-16 to go. 14-7. Raiders up by seven. And the draw play. And that's Ferris. Here the 42, but not enough for the first down. Gassaway and Umdenstock team up for the tackle. It's on the 41. The line to gain is the 43. That's the play they have to stop because not only does it keep drives going, but it eats the clock. So first of all, I'll have to say stop that draw or the short trap up the middle. Third and two. Critical play. Fasten your seat belts. Power on. They're going with the bread and butter guy, and he's close. They have to measure. Looks like he's going to have enough. There is the signal. He does. First and ten. 5.33 to go. Jim Berriman may be thinking, that's enough, guys, that's enough. All right, first down, let's play the draw first. Don't let them gain positive yardage on the draw on first down. Billy Joe Tolliver, the sophomore quarterback. Ferris, 47 Edwards in there. There's Mady, 77. And Gassaway. I think Gassaway made the primary contact. And they did just that. But as you, as you watch those white shirts close or converge on the ball carrier and keeping it to about a three-yard gain. Time remaining. Second down and about six. Close to the first down, not quite there is Ferris. Needed about another yard. It's going to be third down. Umden Stock on the tackle once more. Had 12 unassisted tackles coming into this game. Umden Stock, a 27-year-old, 202-pound, 5'11 senior out of Des Moines, Iowa. Once again, a third and one situation. What we'll probably see is that full house or or power eye backfield trying to root out the center of the line and make the first down, sustain the drive, and keep the clock going. And another big third down play. And again, the power eye with two tight ends. And again, the first down as Ferris pulls his way in the arms of Gassaway to the Lobo 45. Now we see the guard pulling and a lead back in front. 
Dunny is there, but you know, I, I, I wonder, his, his knee, he underwent surgery, he just didn't have the drive there to take Ferris backwards. Final score, Texas Aggies 48, North Texas State 28. First down and 10. Raiders at the bow 45. Gray for two. Well, they'll keep just try to drive the ball straight ahead if they can. They don't want to throw now here unless they have to because clock is inside of four minutes now. Now it is becoming a problem. And the Lobos may have to think about using their remaining timeouts. I believe they have two, if not three. Looks like the Lobos have three and the Raiders have two. It's second down and a long eight at the Lobo 43. Ferris for about two, three more. And the Raiders are just trying to grind out the clock, which shows 319 left. Now this is counting. this is a little bit of a different third down play. This is a third and five. So this is a I, I don't see we'll I don't think we'll see a power eye. We'll see now a backfield where they have to spread the formation and put the ball in the air. They didn't want to have to do this, but that's the situation. Third down, five and a half. And Anderson has a first down. At the 33. Two forty-eight to play. Clock stops on the out of bounds. Here's where you like a strong arm quarterback. He's watching one receiver the whole time. There's no question who he's going to throw to. He just lets Anderson make his outside move, and he gets the ball in there so he doesn't have to break stride. The Red Raiders are rolling. Bouvier Dale down to the 17. Boy, the Raiders are doing a job now. They have to drop, stop the draw first. Have to stop the draw first. Nice hole. Nice cutback. Kenneth turned Kenneth Whitehead turned him in. Ken got a piece of him. Knocked him off balance, and it's uh, Raider first on the Lobo 17 with 2.24 to go. A little power up the middle. And the Lobos get the fumble. The Lobos recover the fumble. James Gray had picked up eight yards, but he loses the ball in there. And Philip Vaughn recovers it, number 45. All right, there's that quick trap play that said, and Torrey Edwards gets the first arm on him. Now there's Danny Lara from behind. Whoops, he still doesn't have it. Going down, ball comes out. Undenstock was part of the tackle. Hard to see who else it was there. All right, now the Lobos drove it 99 yards. Now they have 90 yards of AstroTurf in front of them. Out of bounds to Rogers. 2.06, clock stopped. Tech 14, Lobos 7. The last two years, the games have been won in comeback efforts, won by each team. The Lobos outside their 16-yard line now, second and four, and the clock has stopped. finds James to the 29 for a first down. The clock will stop as they reset the chains. Lobos huddling quickly, 159 to go, where Mitchell made the tackle on James at the Lobo 29. It's almost to the 30. Clock is moving again, 153. Little hook to Rogers. 
up around the 35-yard line, 31-yard line. And this is a time to use a timeout because he couldn't get the ball out of bounds. The Lobos still have two timeouts left. The ball at the 36, and it's going to be second down and four. The Lobos with the timeout. It'll be second and four for the Lobos at their 36. With a minute and 40 seconds to go, and they trail by seven. Monday night at seven on the movies, Jason Robard stars in the zany offbeat comedy, The Night They Raided Minsky's. Don't miss a laugh, Monday at seven on Channel 14. So, Gary, the Lobos are still in it. If, if you wanted to write a storybook ending for the Lobos to demonstrate their ability to come back, this is exactly the situation you'd want. A minute and 40 seconds to go. They still have a long way to go. And you can, you can count on a ball going up quite a bit and trying to run outside patterns. Receivers get outside, out of bounds. They have to score eight to win. So field goal is out of the question. Probably the last possession. That's our situation. Billy Rucker has seven straight completions. He is connected on 16 for 22 for 184 yards. The fabulous Billy Rucker. Boy, he has played under duress tonight. Duress caused by that Texas Tech defense. Here we are, second and four. A minute 40 to go. Billy gets the first down. There is a flag back at the 28-yard line. Billy has the first down, and is Billy hurt? Rucker on his feet. Now he, Rucker goes down again. Rucker waves to the bench. No, don't send in a substitute, he says. What a kid this Billy Rucker is. He is hurting. What a show by Billy Rucker this year. You just can't say too much about Rucker. Oh, but he looks like that leg is just not going to support him. He is in pain. Let's watch here. He sees some daylight. He heads up field. Trying to split two tacklers. Yeah. Riggs from this side kind of bent his left leg under him. Now Mathis. And Rucker is out, and Mathis will be at quarterback. The sophomore Mathis at quarterback now. Mathis steps on a banana peel back there. They had the first down. Artis Jackson was applying heat. It is now third down. And Billy Rucker is talking with Joe Lee Dunn over at the far sideline. It looks like Rucker's going to come back in. The ball on the Lobo 28 where it'll be third down and 11. And there's Rucker. Joe Lee Dunn. Paul Case, one of the other assistants. Paul has the headset on. Now, he's talking to Ben Griffith, the offensive coordinator, up here in the press box. And uh, Paul just is the, the, the medium between the two. Billy looks okay. Let's see him. Oh, yeah. my. It is nice to see him sure is. moving okay. Because there is a great quarterback. Tell you what, he could play on uh, just about any team in the league. Well, every coach they've faced this year has said that. That's for sure. It's going to be third and 11. A minute 13 to go. The Lobos at their 28-yard line. The Lobo attack temporarily derailed when Rucker was shaken up and went out for one play. Mathis moved over from slot back to play quarterback. makes another big play and now it'll be fourth down and long the Lobos have to go to the 40 yard line for a first down so it's fourth and 20 and the clock is rolling with 54 seconds to go and and Calvin just ticking Riggs. away once again from behind number 35 Calvin Riggs I, 
Don't know how many plays tonight he's caught from behind, but he has that great speed. Now the Lobos call another timeout, and they have one left. They trail by 14-7. There is Riggs, who made that big play. He's a 6-foot, 215-pound senior. As a sophomore, he made the sophomore All-American team. And in high school, he was an All-American. Well, you can see why, because he comes through with big plays for them, but he always seems to be chasing the play from behind and catching it with his speed. He has been a nemesis for Billy Rucker tonight, along with the entire Raider defense. You know, one of the things you on the run and shoot, you figure you can run away from backside pressure, but, but Riggs' speed is so good that he can still catch it. You don't expend blockers to block backside when you're sprinting out, So, but you do when you're playing uh, Riggs because Calvin Riggs has too much speed. Billy Rucker and the Lobos down to the end of the rope. It's fourth and 20, 54 seconds to go from the Lobo 20-yard line. Complete. Looking for James. The Raiders take over with 48 seconds to go at the Lobo 20-yard line. Well, I wish that uh, we hadn't had that injury. It was a it was a valiant effort by the Lobos. And, well, you keep using that word, but I know they'd rather have the points on the scoreboard. He has good time to throw here. He steps into it. Now, Ned did want to run an outside pattern, but he broke a little bit late on it. So the Raiders now just want to run out the clock as they pinch in with their power eye formation. And there should be no question but what they can... Run the clock down, 38 seconds, 37, and the clock just ticking away to the Lobos' doom. Not much they can do. Joe Lee, disconsolate Joe Lee done. Clock is still rolling down to 20 seconds. Once again, you live for another week with the questions about what if and what if and what if when you come close. Next week, the Lobos entertain San Diego State, and with one conference loss, nobody in WAC history has ever won the conference with more than one loss, so the Lobos have to win all the way. Now, delay of game is called against the Red Raiders, who just let the clock run all the way down to seven seconds. They'll take the penalty. One more snap, and it'll be over. If at the outset, I think if you'd have asked Joe Lee if we could keep, if you could keep the Texas Tech Raiders to 14 points, do you think you could win? I'd say I think he would agree that would be a pretty good deal. Uh, last play of the game, seven seconds to go. Counting down, two, one, and it's over. And the Red Raiders win, 14 to seven. So Jolie Don is looking for David McWilliams. Jolie Don displaying very fine sportsmanship and David McWilliams, the new coach here at Texas Tech, now goes to two and one. Dunn goes to 0-3 on the season. McWilliams coming here after 16 years of being an assistant at the University of Texas, and he was the captain of their national championship team in 1963. Well, you know, I'd have to give some credit to Spike Dykes, too, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, because their defense played so well the first three quarters. Uh, New Mexico didn't really manage anything until that 99-yard drive in the fourth quarter, so give some credit to Spike Dykes and the Tech defense. So the Texas Tech Red Raiders uh, had their two touchdowns on a three-yard run by Ferris and a 30-yard pass from Tolliver to Walker. The Lobos had their only touchdown on a 25-yard pass play from Rucker to Mathis. And the final score reads 14-7 in favor of the Red Raiders. We invite you to join us next Saturday night at 10 o'clock. The KGSW-TV Sports Presentation.